And that's when you live alone. I think Pat might have had that problem too. Uh, someone to really check on you every day. Now, the Catholic funeral rite has three parts. First of all, there's a vigil, and then there's the mass or service, and then there's the burial. Now, basically, since I was not at the funeral of Caitlin or um, Pat, a few impressions. See, there's two things. I've noticed in my lifetime in the Catholic Church and other churches, a funeral tends to be the celebration of the life of a person. And I think that's been done very well, but I'll add something. And I purposely didn't bring the obituary because I don't want to get too much into that. First of all, Pat was a wonderful person. He was a people person. And I might take after his grandfather, Art Lyon, who liked the kid people, and I liked the kid Pat. And at the biggest wedding I was ever at was in Lawrenceburg, Indiana, when Jane Craven Knoll got married. And Pat was there. I don't know if he was in the wedding party. He was dressed up like a little knight, <laughs> six or seven years old. And during the dinner, a girl that was in the wedding party kept chasing him and said, I love you, I love you. <laughs> And Pat said, I don't even know you. <laughs> and I thought that was funny, and I probably kidded him about that. Secondly, Pat was a people person, and um, he was you know, one of the parts of Scripture that one time brought me tears. In the book of Acts, Jesus went about doing good. And I think Pat went about doing good. And the Habitat for Humanity, participating in that program, would be enough. But he was always there to help and to have a sense of humor, which comes from the word earth, keeps us down to earth. And he really um, helped me. He took some pictures. And I'll never forget, here's the cover of the book. And I wanted, Donna came with him, and I, I usually feel pretty good, but that was not a good day. The wind was blowing, and I couldn't explain to Donna what I wanted. What I wanted was a road as a symbol of life. We travel through life, and that's a road. And the cemetery, we have that path, the dates, which is kind of, you know. But anyway, um, so he took a, a couple of pictures, and I have a picture of Pat carrying the cross and Donna carrying the cross. And Bill Hickson, who was a deacon in the Duke Archdiocese, uh, started to put it together. Now, later, he came and he took this picture after he... Uh, see, Pat, I, I should have been the one to follow in my dad's footsteps of being a body and fender mechanic because I spent hours and hours when I was a little kid by my dad. And I did all kinds of bad things, like letting a jack down on people, pounding <laughs> dents in a car instead of pounding them out, and so on and so forth. And then Pat got carpal tunnel, and we know that he went into uh, taking pictures. And this is one of the, the best pictures that's been in my books. Finally, the last time I saw Pat was at the birthday anniversary of Dale Rice. Mm -hmm. And I spent all, half the time just talking with Pat. And that's the last time I saw him. And this picture uh, uh, really is, is precious to me. Now, every morning with the coronavirus, I sit outside the public library and I can see a flag. And we're at war with the coronavirus. But at the same time, uh, thrown in with this is questioning patriotism. And I was looking at the flag the other day. It occurred to me that the bonds is all served in the military, uh, Mike, Pat, and Tom. And I did, and my brother did, and Chucky, uh, it was my fault that <laughs> Chucky didn't go in the Army, but he married the Army. He married an Army nurse. So with that, we go to the other part of a Catholic Christian or a Christian funeral, and that's the resurrection. Now, in the book of John, Christ is ready to leave the apostles. 
and he says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Have faith in God and faith in me. I go to prepare a place for you so that where I go, you also may follow. Now, and it will become obvious as I read from the official uh, burial book of Catholicism, and I, I, I don't know if we had the, the farewell, if, if you did at the other services. Our brother Pat has gone to his rest in the peace of Christ. May the Lord now welcome him to the table of God's children in heaven. With faith and hope in eternity, let us assist him with our prayers. Let us also pray to the Lord for ourselves. May we who mourn be reunited one day with Pat. And together may we meet Jesus Christ when he who is our life appears in glory. And then there's uh, the blessing of the grave. Lord Jesus Christ, by your own three days in the tomb, you made holy the graves of all who believe in you, and so made the grave a sign of hope that promises resurrection, even as it claims our mortal bodies. Grant that Pat may sleep here in peace until you awaken him to glory, for you are the resurrection and the life. Then he will see you face to face, and in your light will see light and know the splendor of God, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. In the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life, we commend to Almighty God the cremains of our brother Pat, and we commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The Lord bless him and keep him. The Lord make his face to shine upon him and be gracious to him. The Lord give him peace. Now the offertory petitions, the, the, the whole funeral rite is one big petition, but um, I, I never really was with it in terms of songs and all that, but I remember Jim Croce wrote the song, Time in a Bottle. And there was one phrase there. We never seem to have enough time to do the things we want to do once we find them. And that was prophetic because, as you know, uh, some time later, not too long, he, he died. And then one of my favorite little uh, verses is not from the Bible, but it contains biblical values. Lord... I will pass through this way but once. And therefore, if there's any good, any good at all that I can do, Lord, please show me how. And I think Pat did that. He left, made the world a little better place. When I lived at the mound, there was an old nun, and she was delightful. How are you today, sister? I'm this much better. I thought that was cute. <laughs> and Pat, I think, really uh, left something behind and he's in our hearts. We know that. So we will now offer our petitions to our loving Father. And first of all, we pray that Pat uh, be gifted with the crown of eternal life and see God face to face forever and ever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And then we also pray for... Um, we also pray for Pat's uh, mother and father and grandparents on both sides, and for Caitlin, uh, that they enjoy eternal life in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Let's also pray for peace. And what the world needs now is, is the way of Christ, which is a way of respect and love and all kinds of other virtues that we really need at this time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And then we pray for, for peace in our families, in our homes, in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. Does anyone have another petition? Loving Father, we have offered our petitions. Help us to receive your response through Christ our Lord. Amen. God of holiness and power, accept our prayers on behalf of your servant, Pat. Through the death of your son on the cross, you destroyed our doubt. God of the living and dead, accept our prayers. For those who have died in Christ and are buried with him in the hope of rising again. Since they were true to your name on earth, let them praise you forever in the joy of heaven through Christ our Lord. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual life shine upon him. May his soul and all the souls of the faithful departed rest in peace. Amen. Now, for years, I visited a, a lady in the nursing home. And I'd say goodbye, Marge. She'd say, don't say goodbye. Say, until we meet again. And so I'll bless the grave with holy water. And then basically a little thing 